Now we've tied a few of Fran Better's patterns on this channel before. I think it's time for one more. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So Fran Better's, pretty much a legend of Adirondacks fly tying. Now his two most famous patterns are probably the Ossible Wolf and the Haystack, but he's got another really popular one called the Usual. Now I couldn't tell exactly when he came up with this pattern, but we know it was sometime after the 1950s when he came up with the Haystack, because it's a similar fly to the Haystack, but instead of the deer hair tail and upright wing, he uses the hair from a snowshoe hair rabbit's foot. Now the material will create some really good floaters just based on its properties. Not necessarily high floating flies, but flies that are still pretty buoyant. Now this is a really simple pattern to tie. It only uses the one material, but you do want to pay attention. You probably want some bright red or even orange thread because it's part of the fly to be able to see a little bit of that through the dubbed body. So if you haven't tied this one before, give it a shot. It's pretty easy to tie and certainly fun to fish. I think you're gonna like it. There it is in the vise, Fran Better's usual. Now take note of that thread color. You can see a little bit of that fluorescent red through that body, and that is by design. Now sizes for this guy are 12, and Mike Valla says you can tie it down to a 22. You gotta be a pretty good tire to get this thing on a 22. I'm gonna tie it on a size 14 standard length barbless dry fly hook and my fluorescent red thread. I know it looks a little bit like orange in here, but this is a red. So take a base back to the start of the bend. Now, the first and really only material in this guy is a small tuft of snowshoe hair. And this is a little bit more than I need. But watch this, so you'll take this, you see all that fluff up front, that's gonna be our, our dubbed body. So go ahead and pull that out, keep it to the side. And now, the couple of videos I saw on this, David McPhail tied the, the upright wing in first, and Darren from Piscator tied it with the tail first. And I, I kinda like doing the tail first. So that is probably a little bit more than I want, so I'm just gonna grab it by the tips and then try to thin it out a little bit more. And that, it's pretty thick still, but that's about how much I want. So let's catch this in at the back. And if I didn't mention, I am using a 210 denier thread. I want to go a little bit thicker because that's part of the fly, being able to see the thread underneath. So that's two wraps right there. I'm going to go ahead and spin this and cord it up just a little bit more. And take a couple of tighter wraps going back. And I'm going to put one wrap underneath, just to not necessarily prop it up, but keep it from spinning around. Okay, I think that's fine right there. That tail is caught in pretty well. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this off at a little bit of an angle. And how you want to do that, just pull the hair up at an angle. Don't grab the tail that you want to keep, just the front part of it. And put your scissors in here parallel to the hook. And then if you cut it like that, you might be able to taper this down and, you know, keep the underbody from getting too big on you. Now we do want to taper. Obviously we want the thicker up front and then tapering to the back, but we can make that happen when we tie in our front upright wing. Now for the wing, I'm going to make this just a little bit more and probably a little bit thicker. And I pulled the under fur out just as I did for the tail, because we're gonna use that for the, the dubbed body. So let's put a couple wraps on right now and see if that's gonna be long enough for us. Envision it propped up. I think that's gonna be fine right there. And I'll tighten my thread again and put a couple more securing wraps right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this back piece that I did with the tail just a minute ago, or try to, or just cut it off if you can get any type of angle, great. But we'll use this to try and build a little bit of a taper and make sure you coat this underbody with nice, thick, you know, orange wraps. 
Okay, that's not a perfect taper, but we're going to be fine with it. So let's take our thread back to the to the tail, and I am going to wax it. You don't necessarily need to. This stuff isn't all that hard to dub. So here is the the under fur that I pulled out from the bottom of those tufts right there. And I'm going to dub this on here. Oh, kind of tight, but you know, not terribly tight because I do want some of this orange thread to show, show through. So maybe uh, a three inch noodle, we're going to dub the whole body and then put a couple of wraps up in front of that wing to just prop it up. Okay, after you got your wing propped up and a couple of wraps of that dubbing up front, I'm just going to try to lay a little bit of a base down to get me some room for a four or five turn whip finish. Now this is thicker thread than I typically use, so don't want to get too carried away here, but I think that's going to be fine right there. We've got enough room for a four or five turn whip finish here. And I would say now's the time for cleanup, but this is a buggy fly by design, so there's not really any cleanup you want to do. Maybe that little bit of thread tag I have hanging on right there, but I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to put a drop of head cement, put this in my box. So that's it. Fran Better's usual. A very simple pattern to tie. One of the cool things about it, if, if you mess it up and make it too buggy, it's probably just going to be that much better. So I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.